I'm Bree from House of Reptiles in Tigard, Oregon, and this week's animal spotlight is on green tree pythons, actually by request. We had someone ask us to do a video on these guys, and that's a great idea because we're fortunate enough to breed them here in the store and have some really fun opportunities with them. Um, as you can see, I'm holding an adult here, and in the tub, this is a baby green tree python. Something that makes these appealing to a lot of people is that they go through what's called an ontogenetic color change, and they start out being born one color, either red or yellow, and then as adults, they slowly turn into a beautiful green color. Um, sometimes they have yellow speckling like this guy, some of them also in rare cases have a lot of blue on them. Um, either way, they're always beautiful snakes. Um, if you're interested in keeping one of these guys, I think first and foremost what's important to know is although I'm handling this guy, that's a little bit of an anomaly. Uh, in captivity, there are some that are handleable, but there's also plenty that prefer to be left alone. Uh, part of why we have the snake hook sitting out is kind of as a reminder that if you're going to own a green tree, a snake hook's a really good tool to have. Um, even with friendlier ones like these guys, you still always want to use a hook to get them out and kind of let them know that you're coming into their cages because they do tend to have a pretty strong feeding response. Um, if you are interested in keeping them still, another good thing to know about their housing is they do better in arboreal space. These guys do climb. A lot of times you want to set up their cages with perches that they'll wrap around. Um, that's also kind of another thing that makes green trees popular display animals as you can see them perched in their cage and they're beautiful just to look at even if you don't want to handle them. Uh, dimensions as a minimum for their cage you would want it to be 18 by 18 by 24. Again that's a minimum and you can always offer them more space. Uh, another thing that makes their care a little bit different than some snakes is they require high humidity. Here at the shop we spray ours down twice a day so it would be an important thing to do at home as well. Um, feeding is like that of most snakes. You're usually feeding them about once a week, sometimes less for these guys. They have lower metabolism. We definitely start out our babies eating once a week. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll show you here. We also keep feed and shed cards on all of our snakes. It's a really good thing to keep up with at home. Every prey item that you feed them, we write down. Every time they shed, we also write that down. And it's just a handy health record to have for your snake. Um, Again, set up for the baby, you can see we've offered it perches, room to climb. And these guys are, they're beautiful snakes, really rewarding pets if you want something pretty just to look at. Again, in rare cases, it's possible with work, something you can handle, um, but you would definitely want to get them, it's just a beautiful display. They are a little bit more advanced, so probably not necessarily as a first snake either, but if you have some experience with other snakes and you think you want to try something new, it's a great choice.